Right guys, Mark Crossfield here. I'm in the studio today here at Clifton Hill and we've got the Buzzman, Steve Buzzer. Say hello, Steve. Hi guys. Uh, we're gonna do a little lesson like we did with Lockie on Steve's swings. There were some comments on some of the Spanish vlogs about the way your swing looked mm. opposed to its, how it functions. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how Steve's swing fun functions or doesn't. Subject around what you're seeing on your videos, sometimes functions. Uh, Steve teaches here as well. He's a golf pro, teaches here at Clifton Hill also. He's got a background in sports uh, science. Um, I think he's got degrees and things in sports science, haven't you, Steve? <laughs> Education. <laughs> um, so let's give him a lesson, show you guys some of the positives and maybe negatives of Steve Swings so you can all just calm down with your position hitting. Calm it down, guys, calm it down. Let's get stuck in. Right, so we're going to do four shots, Steve, just to capture some data okay. to start. We've got um, GC2HMT on the floor here doing club. We've already captured some K-Vest data from Steve through your biomechanics, the way your body's moving from three sensors on his body. Um, and we've also got the GAS video system on as well. So we're going to present to you some of Steve's numbers and data and show you how maybe he can improve or not need to improve. So if you hit four shots when you start off, okay. Steve. Yeah, it's four good shots. Okay, so let's look at some of the numbers Steve presents as he hits his shot. So how his club is traveling through impact, how he's actually striking the ball, uh, and relate that to maybe some of the movements that they're seeing on the camera. Yeah. yeah, let's take a look at some of this data. Right guys, so let's look at some of your club delivery numbers, Steve, and they are impressive. And this is why Steve is a pro and competed when he was playing more as a pro. I mean, lots of you watching the Spain video, they don't realize that I mean, you haven't played for what, six months, three months, six something? Months, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as a PGA pro, he teaches and does other things. Playing is often at the bottom, unfortunately, of the yeah, list, plus, isn't it? Plus I broke my foot. Broke his foot, but Which you can nice still story. play with a broken really foot. Nice yeah, <laughs> <laughs> too many Sam McGowan's again. Right, so look, club head speed, six iron Steve's hitting here, 101. I mean, that's up that's there. That is a strong, fast club of speed. Steve is not lacking in power when he can get the strike. Boom, the guns. Um, angle of attack, 2.6 down. Tour average, people say, with this club is around four. Um, 2.6, I'm happy with down, almost three degrees. There's a plenty of down in there. Um, and that's certainly down or up view doesn't react, or doesn't relate to any of the way you strike the balls from the patterns yeah. we see. So I would keep that there. Club par 3.9 averaging from the inside. Now Steve's desired shot is a bit of a turning right to left shot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I tend to see everything with a slight draw, so. So if you want to start the ball out to the right to draw it back, you need your path moving right of target. If Steve was swinging zero straight at target, yeah. a draw would be the worst shot he could hit because it's just going to draw away from target. So his path is in the right place to hit your desired shot. Now his face is averaging 1.8 close at 3.9, so pretty good numbers for hitting target which is what you pretty much did on these sets of shots. Um, the only thing that gets a little bit funky with Steve, and I think this is what they see on the cameras, is his lie angle is 2.3 degrees toe ended up. So that means that club is, the toe end is off the ground as he hits the ball. And what we see if we look at some of the video with Steve is we see kind of funkiness in your left foot. So we see as you come down, that left foot spins out, doesn't it, and moves, yeah. which people were noting. Um, and we also see the handle of the club, so the grip part, getting quite low, don't we? Yeah, it can get very low. Which would make sense with these numbers, because from these numbers, I mean, you're averaging 2.6 degrees towed up. Now look, there's some easy fixes for Steve, isn't there? Because 2.6 degrees is easily fitted in a custom fit. It can be, yes. For a start. So if yeah. Steve was happy with his performance, consistency, it was where he'd want everything to be, I would advise getting that club fitted differently. Yeah straight off the bat. And you'll find lots of tour pros will work this way. They'll work their equipment around some of their so-called oddities with their swing, if there's such a thing. So some of the stranger looking swings that you see on the telly um, to fit their talent, to fit their ability. Yeah? Well, it, make, it makes sense, doesn't it? Of course it does, yeah. I mean, if you're performing, why would I change? Now, the only thing that Steve does suffer from a little bit is your shots can be a little bit chaotic. And what I mean by that is we don't know if we're going to get 20 yards of turn, 40 yards of turn, or no turn. Would well, you agree? Well, I've said I, I like using a draw, but if you, if you looked at the videos, I was missing a lot right. Yeah, absolutely. So you weren't getting yeah. your draw. So club face control subject to that yeah. lie is obviously Steve's finding that hard to control. So what happens, if I just pass you that, Steve, yeah. if his club face is open or close to a path, that creates spins. But also what happens is if his face is, is towed up or heeled down, that's going to affect that read and affect the spins he gets. So 
like modern drivers, flat underlie to hit more draw, and then steep underlie to hit more fade. He's doing that in his swing. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit four more shots, and I'm going to give Steve a couple of feelings to try and change this lie. And then between us, which is what I would do with a student, and Steve certainly would in a lesson, I presume, yeah. is um, work together on if you could play with those feelings. Is this something you could take to the course? So let's give Steve a few ideas for trying to change this lie and maybe this impact slightly. So, Steve, if we look at the video yeah. that we've captured, what we see from Steve is definitely the hip appearing on video like it's rotating a lot, me snapping back and foot jamming back as well. So lots of people would read that as a lot of hip rotation. And I've certainly watched you swing and thought, cool, you're snapping your hips back there. And people have said you've got funky hips. Yeah. I've seen you at the well, I've, I've got some funky <laughs> hips. <laughs> so, um, but actually when we measured Steve with KVS, which you'll see the numbers come up now, his hip rotation impact actually isn't that big. And nor is right. your shoulder rotation. But what we do notice is the amount of bend yeah. that you get at impact. So if I steal that one and pop you just there, Steve, so what we see with Steve is him rotating around a bent impact angle. So he is not extending his spine. He is not straightening up with the appropriate amount of side bend to keep him down to that ball. What he's doing is rotating with bend. And that puts a lot of pressure on your knee it can do, yeah. and your foot, does, yeah. which is where you spin out. You've suffered with injuries a bit down there. It you can do. It's, a, it's in the lower back as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We need you extending, uh, yeah. really, don't we? So what we're going to do with Steve is going to hit a few shots, and it's actually similar to Matt's uh, lesson in some ways without the throw. What I want you to do, Steve, is hit a few shots. We're going to try and address this lie. Okay. To take one of the randomised numbers out, one of the ones okay. you're trying to balance. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hit some shots. I want you just to feel that you hit the ball by swinging your arms ahead of your body without rotating your body. Feel like you're pretty side on with this left hip getting higher. So it'll feel much calmer with your hips. So I want you to throw your arms at the target, not your body. Okay, so you'll feel like your arms are overtaking your body. And then once you feel your club going up kind of chest tight, you can pull out and put a proper follow through in. Okay. So if I was to do an example, you will feel like you're doing this. So we're going to try and stay more connected with the left yeah. foot, straightening up through the left foot. So pushing all the foot down on the ground is your feeling. And just swinging the arms at target. Get away from this bend and crunch impact that we see. Okay? Doesn't, look, doesn't look like that's going to hurt. Yeah, yeah. Let's try some. So we'll do, um, let's do three or four shots with this idea and then we'll look how the numbers change. So it's sort of this feeling? Absolutely, absolutely. So really simplifying your connection with the ground at impact and calming your hips down and extending your body it will do. Let's, let's see you hit some. Yeah, it's good. And again. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, it certainly feels more simple, I imagine, that, doesn't it? It does, yes. Feels like yeah. you're doing less, well, I it imagine. It feels like none of this is uh, moving at all. Yeah, absolutely. So that's always the battle, like we said, we map the feel to what actually really is happening, dealing with that. Yeah. What I find, I'm sure you're the same. Good players, like Steve, are able to let go a lot more and try different things. Yeah. Amateurs oh, definitely, are definitely. less willing sometimes, aren't they? They're mentally, they want to but physically they just won't let go of the movement. I think sometimes as well they feel that what we're asking to them to do is going to look silly. Absolutely. And they don't want to... Look silly, look yeah. Silly. We're used to looking silly, <laughs> I suppose. <so. laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think we're just willing to find the yeah. answer. We're willing to try and experiment. And arguably we're maybe a little bit more in control of how we move our body, reality to what we think yeah. we're doing. But certainly I would say yeah, you don't feel maybe as comfortable this way because it's different. No, it feels, it feels, I don't know what the club head speed is, it feels a lot slower. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one to measure. So let's so. have two more shots. It's so neat, just looks so simple. I okay. can feel a lot more, I can feel the weight actually going into the foot. Yeah, and then it pushing back off the ground yeah, a bit Yeah, you can more. imagine that's not feeling I... Like I'm you're just going to spin and ruin the yeah. greenkeeper's tee every time. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Pretty good striking there. So look, let's look at those numbers and see what that has changed to Steve's dynamic fluid impact, if it's better or worse. And then we'll talk about how the feeling of that can be worked into you okay. taking it to the course. Okay. Let's take a look. Right, looking at the numbers, Steve, really interesting, actually. What we start to see, so the club path hasn't really changed. You're swinging it on the same path. Yeah. You're actually more down when you're yeah. trying to extend up through your left side, which lots of people feel they're going to top it yeah. when they do that. But you're actually more down, so that's throwing the club more down. You're obviously putting a bit that, more that, side that's bend in. closer to the tour average as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, so 3.5, so, so that's not a bad thing. Your club face control is worse. You did have a very funky one on the first shot, but that's yeah. 
obvious when people are changing the first one can obviously yeah. be just crazy wild i mean if you take that one out it's still a little bit too heavy closed we need to think about ways of controlling the club face the closure of it but i'm quite happy and then if you look at the lie it's completely transferred on the lie yeah that's uh I haven't seen it at that. Yeah, 0 0.5 average. So he's actually getting those clubs, which really is a static fit, fit you. Yeah. Um, not that the static fit is better than a uh, dynamic fit, any subject again to what you're trying to achieve your golf. But the club is actually bottoming out more flat on the ground yeah. now. And certainly if we look at the camera positions, uh, so as the video here, you'll see that the swing looks, what that means anyway is kind of nothing, but it looks certainly more sensible. You know, like you're doing a, a less jumpy, spinny, kind of crunchy move for impact and more just swinging that club out towards target. Club head speed, you mentioned you felt like it was a lot slower. It's four mile an hour slower, okay, which is pretty good. The yeah. first one was at the same speed. You've got enough club head speed. Yeah. That box is ticked. We don't particularly need more from Steve. You've got the power. But I feel if I said do that feeling but just swing your arms yeah. faster, you would raise that club head speed straight back up to where it was. I think you were just slowing your arms down because... Often, when people do their hips less, they relate that hitting that not as yeah. far, so then they just slow everything yeah. down. That connection just makes everything slow down. You can swing your arms as fast doing that, I believe. I and think I, we've got, there's a lack of, obviously there was a lot of resistance in here as well, and now I'm feeling freer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sm freer, smoother, that yeah, yeah. feels nicer. Yeah, absolutely. So and I'm actually relating that to well, th slower speeds when I think that that's probably not the case. Uh, well, hardly at all. And yeah. the other thing as well is you could knock that club head speed exactly yeah. back to where he wanted if you just chose to swing your arms yeah. faster while keeping that quiet. Okay. Yeah. Interesting video, guys. Um, thanks, Steve. Thanks for taking part. It's always no, a bit you. nervous. Obviously, the pros don't like themselves to be no. put on the cutting board and sliced Can open. Can you pi pixelate my face? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of buzzers at work here, isn't there? <laughs> I think, yeah, absolutely. I think the main point for me and what the videos I saw was really interesting. I thought it really let the video, it really let some of the comments down, I think, when people started to really kind of get into how your swing looked. When, you know, Steve hasn't got a CV on YouTube. His CV is his CV. He has performed and done things. But the fact that you got, so I don't mind for Steve. Steve's hard enough. He can take it hard enough. But, you know, he's, he's, he's thick skinned enough to, he doesn't care about the comments. It's more that if you guys are out there thinking you need to hit these pretty positions, then that's why you're probably not getting better. Go and get measured. Get, down here, yeah, get it? impact, get collision working, and you'll find your shots will improve. They just will, because if collision is sensible, subject to the shape shot you want to hit, you're going to hit it online. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for watching, guys. Post comments down below. Love to hear what you've got to say, and we'll speak to you all soon. So if you like what's going on here, don't be afraid to subscribe to the channel. Also, thumbs up the video. Post comments. Love to hear what you guys got to say. Let's keep it social. The more we talk, the more we share, the easier this game will get for, uh, for everybody. So if you want to find me on Facebook here, you can find me on Facebook. If you want to tweet me, find me on Twitter here as well. Just follow the links all in the description. Come and join the show. Get active, get involved, get playing some better golf. Thanks for watching.